Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ray Marquina, aka the official Arcaneer. Today, we are diving into an exciting new topic for all of you Microsoft Fabric users out there. One big question that keeps coming up is how to handle source control effectively within Fabric, especially if you're using Azure DevOps. In this video, I'm going to walk you through setting up a repository from scratch, creating a few workspaces, and getting everything organized. And we'll finish off by going through our very first pull request together. So whether you're just starting or looking to streamline your workflow, this video is perfect for you. So get ready and let's get started. So the first thing I'd like us to take a look at is this illustration that is provided to you by Microsoft. Search for Microsoft Fabric on Microsoft Learn. Uh, if you search for Git integration and navigate to the manage Git branches, you'll see this illustration. It's also very good documentation to go over to really familiar, familiarize yourself with source control and how it's going to integrate with Microsoft Fabric. But specifically, this illustration is what we're going to try and achieve today. You're going to see that you're going to have your dev team workspace, something that I refer to often as a collaboration workspace. You're going to have a private workspace or a, a user workspace. And to each of those are going to be tied a specific branch. So from your collaboration workspace, it's going to be tied to main branch. And for your own feature workspace or private workspace, it's going to be tied to its own feature branch. And between the two branches, this is where you can do things like um, create PRs and merge items so that they go into main, and then you can sync them to your collaboration workspace. So this is a good illustration because this is exactly what we're going for in our branch out strategy. So now that we have that understanding, let's go back to Power BI. So the first thing I want to do in Power BI is create a couple of workspaces. Let's go ahead and first create our Fabric Dev workspace. Again, think of this as our collaboration workspace. I'm going to check advanced, make sure that I'm on my trial version. And if you're not on trial and you do have your own capacity, just make sure that your Fabric Capacity Radio button is selected. And I'm going to go ahead and click Apply. And then I want to mimic having two data engineers. So I'm going to create a workspace for each of those. So let's go ahead and create uh, a new workspace. We'll call it Feature One Workspace. And again, we'll apply. And then I'll create a Feature Two Workspace. And get that created. OK. So in total, now we have three workspaces. Again, the idea here is I have two data engineers and they are working to put code into their collaboration workspace, right? This is um, simulating a dev workspace. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to create our repository to create our main branch. So let's navigate into DevOps and under uh, repos, you can create a new repository. I think you need admin or repo permissions within DevOps, so make sure you have that permission set for yourself. And I'm gonna create a new repo called Fabric Analytics. Add the readme file. And, and you can see that it's now created. The next thing that I wanna do is I wanna create a, uh, a folder within this repo called Fabric Workspace. And this will be good in case you want to separate uh, maybe data engineering from reporting. You can create like a Fabric data workspace or a Fabric reporting workspace. This will allow you to separate those objects. OK, so you can see that it's asking me to commit the readme file. So let me go ahead and commit that. Perfect. So now I've created a brand new repo. And what comes with it is main branch or is a main branch. And what I want to do is I want to enforce a policy on here so that data engineer one or two can't come into this collaboration workspace directly and make modifications. So in order for you to do that, go to the ellipses at the end here and go to branch policies. And you're going to select require minimum number of users. You can set that to whatever your value for your organization is. Uh, for me, it's going to be one. And the other thing that I'm going to check box here is the allow requester to approve their own changes. I'm going to do this because it's only me. 
Um, but I would not advise against this in, in an actual organization, right? We should be, we should be having people review our code. Okay. So those are really the only things that we need to set. So let me go back into fabric and let's go back to that collaboration workspace. And now the next thing I need to do is tie it to source control. So I'm going to go to Git integration. I'm going to select DevOps and I'm going to connect with my account. I'm going to select the organization. I'm going to select the, uh, the project. I call it fabric works. I thought I named it something else. Fabric analytics. Yeah. So let me go back over there. Let me see what happened. Uh, grab the right organization. Oh, fabric works as the project, excuse me, not the repo. <laughs> and then I'm going to select the fabric analytics and I'm going to select that this is coming from main branch and then I can do fabric workspace and I can select connect and sync. And again, to kind of showcase what that branch policy is doing, I'm going to go ahead and create a new notebook here. We'll call it notebook test. And now that it's saved, let's go back to the workspace and we can see that this has been added to the list, but you can see that the git status says it's uncommitted. And if I try to commit this, we should hopefully be greeted with an error saying that this is forbidden because of a branch policy that we have in place. So unable to commit git changes. So the branch policy is doing what we want it to. So let me go ahead and delete this now. And let's go configure our feature workspaces. So for data engineer one, let's go ahead and uh, connect them to the project and organization. So we'll select the fabric analytics. Now the branch is going to be a new branch because this is going to be a feature branch that we're creating. So let's do feature one, but it is going to be derived off of main. So let me go ahead and create that. And I do need to say that any objects that I create are going to go in the fabric workspace. Again, mimicking what we have in the main branch. So I'm going to go ahead and connect. And what we're going to do now is go ahead and create that PR. So again, that notebook that we wanted to create initially that we couldn't, that's what we're going to create now. So let's create notebook one. Let's add something called print hello. And we can see that it's saved. Let's go back to that workspace. And now, because this isn't tied to any policy for our feature branch, we can commit this change. So again, if you think back to that illustration, what we need to do now is we need to go from our feature branch and we need to create a PR and merge that into main. So in order for us to do that, uh, you can do it one of two ways. You can do it right within DevOps and create a pull request, or you can just create, uh, click this link and it will take you right to DevOps into the page that you're looking for. And from here, you can create your pull request. So if you navigate to files, you can see that we added a notebook um, and you can see that uh, we did add that print statement. Hello. So that looks good. Let me go ahead and create and I can approve and now I can complete. So it's going to ask you if you want to delete that feature branch after uh, you've merged your changes. I'm going to opt for no. Again, depending on your workspace strategy, this might be something that you want to do and just create a brand new feature branch from that same workspace. Um, I like this concept of using a long lived feature branch, and this is going to enable me to continue to use my workspace even after others have contributed to the collaboration workspace. And I'll show you how that works here at the end. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and complete that merge. Now, if I navigate back to my collaboration workspace, 
we should now see that within source control, we do have notebook one here. And let me just say update. Oh, uh, looks like it's not working because it, it took the fact that I had notebook one in here already. Um, and fabric takes a little bit to delete objects if you want to name them the same thing. So I'm going to, uh, hold off on this, uh, update. Um, but for now, just know that this code is in main. It's just not synced to the workspace yet. So while we're waiting for that, let's navigate to feature two workspace, right? So let's imagine we onboarded a brand new data engineer, data engineer two, and now we need to set them up to have their own branch. So again, we're going to go to their workspace. We're going to go to Git integration, and we're going to set the uh, configuration here. And again, we're going to give them a brand new branch, and we'll call that feature two. And it will be off of main. Now, the difference here, I got to put in the right folder. Now, the difference here is they're coming in brand new. So anything that was in main prior to them coming in, we want it to show up here. So by selecting from main branch and then syncing, you can see that they did get notebook one inside of their feature branch or inside of their feature workspace. So this is great. Now let's imagine that they need to create a note, uh, another notebook, right? And, and then they need to also push it out into their own PR. So let's go ahead and say print hello to. You can see that that's saved. Again, you can see that that's uncommitted. We can commit that change and then we can create that PR by navigating to feature. And I can now create that pull request. And again, looking through it, you can see that, uh, right, we're just making an ad here. There's nothing being deleted or anything like that. Um, so you can see there's hello too. That looks right. So let me go ahead, create approve, and let me complete that change, and I'm not going to delete it. So that's thinking. And now you can see that that has been completed. So if I go back to the collaboration workspace, what we should, what we should see now is within source control is we have two objects to commit, right? Notebook one and notebook two. Let me try updating now, see if that's going to work. And there you have it. Now my, coll my collaboration branch now has the two objects that each engineer has worked on. So one thing that you might notice is feature, uh, by keeping these long lived feature branches is that data engineer one or that feature one workspace is now out of sync with this collaboration branch. So if I go back to feature one workspace, you're gonna see that I only have notebook one, even though there's notebook two in there. So in order for us to continue to use this branch effectively, what we need to do is we need to get latest. Now, unfortunately, there isn't a way to do this directly within Fabric. Uh, you do have to go back to DevOps. So what I traditionally do is go back to DevOps, go to pull requests, create a brand new pull request, and say that I want to do a pull request from main back into my own workspace. And I'll just call this get latest. And if we go to files, you'll see that what it's pulling as latest is two because I already have that first notebook. So it's only going to give me the difference. I'm going to approve and complete and I can complete that merge. And if I go back into my feature workspace one, you'll see that now I have the ability to update to bring in notebook two. And that's going to be a wrap for today's video. We covered a lot of ground setting up workspaces within Fabric and aligning them to a repo within Azure DevOps. We even did a couple of walkthroughs to, to showcase what some of those PRs are going to look like for those data engineers. I hope this walkthrough gave you the clarity and confidence to get started with source control in Microsoft Fabric. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this. Let me know in the comments if you think there's anything specific you'd like me to cover in future videos. Thanks for watching, happy coding, and we're going to see you in the next one.